and our Redeemer. What's your name? I don't mean the name that you were given when you were born. Rather, I mean, what's the, what's the meaning of your name? How did you get that name? What's the story behind it? I mean, did it, did it, you, were you named after maybe friends or relatives of your parents? Or did they look your name up in a baby book of all the different names and, and choose one that had a special meaning? Or maybe, maybe they just simply liked the sound of your name and the way that, that it rolled off their tongues, rolled off their tongues. Tammy and I had girl names picked out before all of our uh, children were born. The name was uh, Leah Renee. Those were two daughters of friends of ours from church. And, and we loved the, the fact that, that it was biblical, Leah, and, and the way that it, it sounded together. Unfortunately, we never had any girls. We never got to use, uh, use that name, so it's still there for somebody else to, to use if they'd like. You know, many Bible names have specific meanings. And most famous is Jesus himself. The angel tells Joseph in, in Matthew one twenty one that Mary will have a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew. You are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus means the Lord saves. It's why he was born, to save us. But not all biblical names are, are quite so wonderful. Abraham and Sarah give their, name, their son the name Isaac because they both laughed when God told them that they were going to have a child in their old age. Why, that would take a miracle. And so they laughed. And they named him Isaac, which means he laughs. And then there's the prophet Hosea. Hosea lived at a time when the people of Israel and Judah were unfaithful to God. They worshipped other gods and they treated each other terribly. There was lying and stealing and adultery and murder. You know, it sounds a little bit like today. And, and so, when Hosea marries and has children, God instructs him to give them very prophetic names. His daughter is named Lo Ruhama, which means not loved. And his second son is named Lo Am I, which means not my people. It was a way of saying change your behavior because God does not love the way that you are acting and God no longer considers you his people. Which is an important message, but can you imagine that little girl growing up bearing the name not loved? I mean, how many years did she spend in therapy dealing with that? Of course, it still happens today in some places. People are given, given names that have some kind of meaning. There's one guy in Malawi who changed his name to Gospel because his parents had been pretty miserable when he was born, and so they gave him the first name, Misery. And there was a girl in Ghana who was given the name Melavedio because she was one of those oops children her parents thought they had done, they, they were done having children. They had hoped they were done having children. And so, but then she came along and they gave her the name Melavevio, which means not necessary. Like, really, God, that was not necessary. Names can carry meaning. And I don't really know the reason why I got the name I have, but. Maybe you do. Maybe you knew where your name came from. This summer, we are spending the whole summer looking at someone who has a very special name. His name is Peter. Call him Pete for short. Pete wasn't born with that name, though. It's one that he picked up later, just like my Uncle Pete. My Uncle Pete wasn't given the name Peter, either. His given name was Earl. But his dad was also Earl. Pete was a junior. And so they called him by another name. They called him Pete. Perhaps they, they named him after his uncle Pete, Peter Rowley. 
I don't know for sure. But for the rest of his life in his little town, they knew him not as Earl, but as Pete. And it's the same way for the disciple that we call St. Peter. His given name was Simon. And sometimes we hear the, the Bible talk about him as Simon Peter or Cephas, which is Aramaic for Peter. But once Jesus gives him that name, it just kind of stuck. And listen to how it happened. It's found in the 16th chapter of Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Well, what about you, he asked. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. It starts off not with who Peter is, but with who Jesus is. Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And, and Peter, who is so clueless in the Gospels uh, that he's always giving the wrong answer or doing the wrong thing, so much so that you, when Jesus asks that question, who do you say that I am? You almost ex expect Peter to raise his hand, oh, I know, you're Jesus. But that's not what Jesus is asking. He's asking, do you know who I am? Do you know? that I am the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And for once, Peter nails it. For once, he gets it right. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone yet that he was the Messiah. Simon Peter knows who Jesus is. But now Jesus tells him who he is. You are Petros. You are Peter. You are Rock. You know, Rock isn't a, a very common name. I suppose we could translate it Rocky. Even then, not too many people have the name Rocky. But I've only personally known one other person who went by the name Rock. He was a classmate of mine from seminary. And his name was Rock. His sister's name was Pebble. And his brother's name was Brick. <laughs> now, their last name was Jones. And their, their parents thought with a name like Jones, they needed to give them um, some unusual names, some unusual first names. And, and so you got Rock, Pebble, and Brick. <laughs> but Jesus doesn't name Simon Rock just to be different. He calls him Rocky because God has a plan for him. Remember last week we talked about how Peter before Pentecost is such a reject? He's a clueless coward, a bumbling blowhard, a, a man of little faith who sinks like a rock when he tries to walk on water. But here Jesus gives them a name of who he can be, who he will be. Simon will become Peter will become the rock. Even though Peter doesn't feel very strong or steady right now, he will become rock solid. He will become a person that we call St. Peter. A person some call the first pope. There's some debate over what Jesus actually means when he tells Peter that on this rock, Jesus will build his church. The Roman Catholic Church interprets that to mean that Peter is given a special position that will be passed down to all of the bishops of Rome from then on. That's why they call him the first pope. 
To this day, the Pope is said to sit on the, the chair or the throne of St. Peter, meaning that, that he holds the office and the authority of Peter, though there is an actual chair there in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome that they say was, uh, was Peter's wooden chair. It's now been covered with, with bronze and surrounded by much finery, but it is said to be the actual chair of Peter. But when they speak about chair, they're sp speaking about a position. And when the Pope speaks from the chair, from that position, or ex cathedra in Latin, when the Pope speaks ex cathedra from the chair, he is said to make infallible statements. In other words, in Catholic dogma, the Pope, as Peter's successor, is incapable of errors regarding doctrine and scripture when he speaks ex cathedra from the chair of St. Peter. Now, now, other churches take a different view of Peter the Rock. They don't see it as creating an office that's passed down from popes, but rather as a statement of the role that Peter will play in the early church. Peter is the Rock. He is the one that will lead the newborn church of Jesus Christ. We'll see some of those stories next month when we get into Acts and we find what Peter does after Pentecost. But remember right now, when Jesus gives him the name Peter, he is anything but a rock-solid guy. So his name is more of a promise than a reality. It's more of a vision to live into than a description of who he is at the moment. In fact, just after Peter professes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, just after he manages to finally get it right for once, and he receives the new name, Peter, Peter goes back to his old clueless ways, and Jesus calls him by another name, one not so nice. Let's pick it up in Matthew 16 where we left off. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. One minute Jesus is calling him the rock on which he will build the church, Peter. And the next minute Jesus is calling him Satan and a stumbling block to Jesus accomplishing his purpose. He goes from, from solid rock to stumbling block in a mere three verses. For now, Peter is less rocky and more dumber than a box of rocks because he can't understand what the Messiah has come to do. He can't, can't understand why Jesus came in the first place to save us by giving his life for us. So what's your name? And I don't mean the name that you were given at birth, like Earl, I mean, what name do you have right now that describes who you are? Jesus calls Peter Satan because he was setting his mind on human concerns and not on God's concerns. So is your name Satan? Or is your name Isaac? He laughs. Because the thought that God would work a miracle in your life like he did back in the Bible is... It seems like a joke. Maybe your name is you of little faith, as Jesus calls Peter once. Because you can't quite believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Is your name broken? Be because your life is falling apart? Is your name Lo Ruhama, not loved? Because people have treated you as worthless and expendable? 
It's your name, Lo am I, not my people. Because you've not been welcomed in a church or in your neighborhood or maybe even in your own family. Is your name just Lo? Because that's how you're feeling right now. Down and low and defeated. What is your name right now? That may be what people call you. That may be what you call yourself. But Jesus calls you something more. Jesus already sees the person you can be, the person you will be by the power of the Holy Spirit. Where you see broken, Jesus sees whole. Where you see little faith, Jesus sees a mustard seed that will move mountains. Where you see not loved, Jesus sees my beloved. Where you see not my people, Jesus sees my people. Where you see low, Jesus sees life, abundant life for you. And where you see Jesus, where you see reject, Jesus sees rock. Your own version of Peter, who as messed up as he was, as as confused as he so often was, Jesus saw as worth building the church on. And he became the name that Jesus gave him. Hear the Lord speak to you these words through the prophet Isaiah in chapter 43. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have called you by name. Not the name we call ourselves, maybe not even the name that our parents called us, but the name God knows us by. The name Jesus gives us as a part of his family. My Uncle Peter was, my Uncle Pete was perhaps called Pete because of his Uncle Peter. I don't know that for sure. But I knew, do know that his given name was a family name because his father had the same name, Earl. And in a way, the Apostle Peter is given a family name too. He will be the rock on which Jesus builds the church because Jesus is the original rock. Romans 9.33 applies the prophecy in Isaiah to Jesus when it says, As it is written, See, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. Not only is Peter the rock, Jesus is the rock. And Peter is a chip off the old block, you might say. Picking up the family name that goes back all the way to God the Father, our rock and our redeemer. So what name does God call you as a part of his family? What name does God call you does he call you friend, child of God, faithful servant, healer, prayer warrior, my people, my beloved, rock? What is it that God calls you to be through the power of the Spirit? Live into that. Live into what God calls you. Not what others call you or even what you might call yourself. Live into what God calls you. It's God who gives you your identity. It's God who calls you by name. Let us pray. Lord, help us to hear the name that you call us the name that you know we can be, the name that you are already forming us into. So often we put ourselves down. We call ourselves names. 
or we suffer under the weight of the names that others call us. And we forget that our identity does not come from from whatever name our parents gave us or even from the names that we take on ourselves, but our identity comes from you. You are the one who determines who we are. And you have given us a great name. We truly are loved. And we truly are your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for looking on us even when we might mess up, when we might be like Peter before Pentecost. Thank you for looking upon us and calling us your own. Amen.